on here. Those of you who regularly follow my Facebook page will have heard me go on about this for a, a good week now. This is the Hacker Gondolier 7 Watt Valve Amp. What's special about this amp? Well, it didn't start out its life as a guitar amp. Back in the late 60s, Hacker produced a range of portable record players. These record decks were designed to be fully mobile music reproduction centres featuring their own amp and speaker all encased in a sturdy, robust plywood box. The gondolier boasted no distortion even with the volume maxed out and a full bass ready to fill a room with sound. My father came into possession of one of these record players recently and he managed to salvage the record deck itself and renovated that, put a new cartridge on and got it working as a standalone unit. Using the record deck with his own system, he offered me the valve amp and the rest of the box, suggesting that it would make a very good little bedroom volume practice amp for guitar. Obviously, I'd have to be a mug not to accept the offer of a late 60s valve amp. So we renovated the amp and got it back to its former glory and I took the plywood box, the big plywood box, and cut it down to be a nice little compact amp head case to house that little 7 watt amplifier. Let's take a closer look at the Hacker amp and see exactly what I've done to it. This is the innards of the Hacker Gondolier amp and I'm just going to take this opportunity to say be very very careful if you're messing around inside valve amplifiers they can be lethal, and I mean lethal. Some of these components can hold voltages uh, that will kill you. So um, if you don't know what you're doing, don't mess about in here. Stay safe. For the amp renovation, we replaced all these electrolytic capacitors here, and these two big ones here. Um, electrolytics don't age well, and this being from the late 60s, uh, these things were pretty much dried up and needing replaced, so all the electrolytics got replaced there. And that's standard fare for doing any sort of audio equipment. Um, also, a couple of these resistors got fried, we replaced them with these big white wire wounds there. Um, I think the valve, one of the valves went down and the whole thing went in fire at one point uh, in the past. So some of the components just got totally fried. So we replaced out anything that was a bit dodgy, anything that needed replaced, and that's how it looks right now. That's the control panel from the back, uh, we've got a switched volume control here, uh, so that works as an on-off switch and a volume, and there's a treble and a bass control for the EQ. The valves sit underneath this metal panel, and I'll take the whole unit out, and we'll have a look at those. So with the housing popped up and turned around here, we can see the valves. We're running a little EZ80 and then two ECL86s. Now these ECL86s were pretty much the top of valve evolution for the day. They were one of the last types of valves um, produced before transistors took over and as a result not many devices use these valves and there wasn't many made to use these valves before valves fell out of fashion. So these valves are no longer produced anymore and because of the lack of um, demand for them, the lack of devices that use them, they're very very difficult to come across. Um, the only way you can get them is either buying used or if you're lucky you can find some new old stock that haven't been used yet but that supply is dwindling by the day so these things uh, are quite pricey now um, because they're just not being produced and there's not many of them about and people are trying to hoard them up for the devices that they've got. So um, a couple of those valves will set me back pretty much as much as four uh, 6L6s as well. That's a size comparison of a 6L6 valve. So I've got the Hacker Amp all hooked up here. I'm just going to go straight into it and then I'll use some different drive pedals and things to show you some of the other sounds we can get. The shape pole here, so we're just going to see how it sounds. Just guitar straight to the amp.
it sounds like just clean on its own. I've got the Ibanez Tube Screamer here, so it's set to maybe about ooh, 9 o'clock uh, on the drive, so tone set in the middle, so this is just it with the, uh, the Tube Screamer, this is it off. And this is it with the Tube Screamer on. So it still keeps it clean but just sends it in a little bit of break up which is quite nice. I've now changed over from the Ibanez Tube Screamer to the Vox Saturator for a bit more gain and we'll see how it sounds with that. Let's try a slightly different guitar now. This is a Squire Jazzmaster, and it's a pretty nice one. It's got a couple of uh, Duncan Design Soap Bar pickups in here. So we'll see just what this one sounds like. Uh, again, just going to go through, through clean first and run through a couple of different sounds. Um, get an idea of what the amp sounds like through a different guitar. Ibanez chip screamer now. Thank you. 
lovely richness and clarity from this little valve amp. It's a classic little vintage uh, tube amp. A very clean sounds, but if you throw on um, a bit of a tube screamer or some sort of clean boost, you can just get it going at the breakup, and if you get slightly higher distortion style pedals, you can push it further. Um, I'm using this Fox saturator here, which I find to be quite a transparent uh, distortion. It still lets the tone of the amp through and puts the distortion on top of it, it doesn't cover it up. Um, so a good distortion pedal should do well in front of this and you can get some uh, you know, more fun modern functionality out of such a little vintage system. But a bit of reverb, a bit of delay as well added in and you've got something that sounds very, very old fashioned, very vintage and it's rather, rather, rather nice. I'll probably use this for recordings at some point. Um, nice little amp and I'm, I'm glad I've got it. it didn't it didn't involve too much work to get it there. Hope you enjoyed this one.